Supreme Magus, Chapter 65 Judging a Book by Its Cover In the White Griffin, like in all the six big academies, students from different years had no common spaces. To avoid the older and stronger seniors to haze their juniors, this feat had been achieved simply by having each academic year take place on a single floor. On the ground floor of the castle, there was the welcome area for the visitor and secretariat, where clerks would take care of the academy's paperwork. The first floor accommodated the first year of the academy, the second floor the second one, and so on. Above the fifth floor, there were the staff living quarters and their personal labs, but most of the space was noted on the map as either empty or assigned to a nondescriptly named department. Leeds suspected that all the academy's private business, like the hidden specializations, training, courses, took place there. In that moment, though, while looking at the castle map with Soluspedia, Lit wasn't wondering about the academy's mysteries, rather he was cursing its faulty design. Damn it, it's no wonder that the professor always move around with warp step. I didn't realize it at first, but even a single floor is like a small city, much bigger than the whole Lutia village. The prize hall is quite far from the hospital. It will take me at least 10 minutes to reach it, and much more to return to my apartment. I hadn't planned on doing this much cardio. I'm tired. The only things I want to do are sleeping and eating. The only silver lining in this situation is that everyone is suffering the same fate. After the gong, Professor Vaster left on his own, leaving us stranded in the world. With all that happened during the first day, the psychological burden on its mind was enormous. Facing bullies, holding himself to use true magic, being forced to tolerate so many idiots without kicking their asses was something he was no longer used to. Since his birth, he had always kept the human interactions to a minimum. Now, he was constantly on alert. He couldn't lower his guard for a second. The ballot always at hand. He couldn't wait to lock the door behind him and finally have some peace and quiet. I don't know if we'll ever be allowed to use warp steps in here. Solus pondered. But why exactly aren't we floating? flying or something there is no rule against the use of magic within the academy except if it's used to harm or harass others lit froze on the spot face palming because of his own stupidity either i'm too tired to think clearly or you are definitely smarter than i look i love you solace lit thought i love you more she replied Lit pretended to cast a personal flight spell and then zoomed away sticking with his back on the ceiling. Ten minutes trip become one minute flight at low speed. Lit couldn't risk crashing against someone else. During that time, Lit contemplated how having a symbiotic relationship had changed his life. He was not thinking about Solus having a 360 degree sight, her pocket dimension, or any of her capabilities. What never ceased to amaze him was how he had come of being used to think of himself as we, rather than I, in his own thoughts, despite the terror that she had struck in his heart after their first meeting, Solus was now closer to him than his sister's. They shared even his dreams while he was asleep. When he arrived, the prize hall was a complete disappointment. Lid had imagined it like a library, but filled with magical treasures, 
with the shelves occupied by items and their descriptions. He had thought about browsing through them, asking the clerk's help from time to time, but reality begged to defer. Squeezed between the battle mage and the war mage training halls stood something that closely resembled an ATM. On the flashing display, there was the blinking image of an open palm, so it followed the foolproof instruction, sending mana into it. The display turned bright, making a 3D hologram of a clerk to appear. It was a chubby woman in her 30s with a tired face that put Litz to shame. Her eyes focused on his face. Lid could see her fiddling with something, kind of a crystal. You are Lid of Lutia, right? The crystal in her hands was projecting a detailed image of his facial features. Lid nodded. Is anyone there with you? Is someone forcing you to spend your points? No, Lid was cynical and paranoid, yet he was surprised by how bad things in the academies had to be to enforce such protocol. The woman pressed another crystal and a bubble of light enveloped Lid. You are in a safe zone. No one can hear, see or hear us now. Do you need help? I can send you a guard in a second with warp step. Are you sure everything is fine? Yes, I am fine. Thanks for your kindness. One thousand points on your first day? The woman sounded sincerely amazed. Kid, you have hit the mother load. Feel free to check our inventory. On the screen appears something similar to a web page that he could navigate through him by using his mana. The dimensional items prices range from the 100 to over 300 points. Magic story and rings costed 100 points per tier. There were also weapons available, but Lit had never held a real one. His training back on earth made use only of wooden swords, knives and spears. The balance was completely different, and without a proper training, they would be useless against a skilled opponent. Potions were the cheapest objects, costing 10 points each. The most expensive item was the uniform, costing 5,000 points. That would allow it to keep it even after concluding his studies and have it look change to something less flashy. Sadly, there was no wrist or pocket watch available. He bought the cheapest dimensional amulet, 80 points, one magic story ring for each of the first three tiers, 600 points, a physical enhancement portion of each type, 30 points. Lid now had all he needed to mask the use of true magic and solace. The clerk sent him the items via warp steps, one at a time, asking him to imprint them in front of her for security reasons. Even the potions were no exceptions. On his way back, he stopped at the canteen. It was too early for dinner, but he was in dire need for comfort food. So he stored a hot chocolate cup and some pastry before going back to his room. The books had yet to be delivered, so he could finally relax and contemplate approaching his table. Lid stopped them before they could sit down. Sorry, but we have a saying in my village. The best way to enjoy a blinker requires only two guests, me and the blinker. We didn't want to share it, we just wanted to sit here with you, Uriel said. Really, Lid knitted his eyebrows. Aren't you afraid of the consequences of associating yourself with a pariah? Uriel laughed at the idea, drawing all the eyes in the canteen. The only thing the others knew 
was that the four of them belonged to the same specialization. Expecting a fight to break out, the room felt silent. What's there to be afraid of? My father is an archmage. He can wipe out most of these guys with a finger snap. Besides, powerful mages should stick together. Yeah, what about the glass flask you threw at me this morning? Or the dirty handkerchief she hit me on the head with? Liz said while pointing at Freya, who became red from the embarrassment. How do you know I was right behind you? I am that good. I admit it. We started with the wrong foot, but there's no reason we cannot be friends. Uriel said with a confident and charismatic attitude. Friends? Liz stood up. The audience even stopped chewing, trying to eavesdrop on their conversation. That's the son of an archmage. Guess he doesn't fear the coward's end. I hope they kill each other. These were some of the comments that Lit and Solus managed to perceive. If you were in my shoes, would you really be friends with someone that first mistreated you, only to act all friends when he has discovered your talent? My educated guess is no. You all should have been smarter and not have judged a book just by its cover. Lucky for me, you revealed your true nature, so I won't buy your nice act. I admit it, I was wrong and I apologize for that. Uriel was unrelenting. Lid had to give him that much. You may not like us, but try to be more pragmatic. If they see you with us, your life will be much easier. Point taken, Lid replied, but right now, I don't feel like making friends, maybe another time. He extended his hand to Uriel, who promptly shook it. Thanks for not treating me with your dad's power, much appreciated. Would have worked? Uriel asked with a smile. No, I would have called your bluff. Neither you or any archmage strikes me as someone so petty and short-sighted of making an enemy out of the entire academy or something so trivial. Uriel accepted the compliment and walked away, close follows by Freya. Quilla remained herself behind, staring at Lit with her big puppy eyes. Sorry for not helping you this morning, but I was too scared to move, she said in a low tone. They aren't bad guys. I think they deserve a second chance. They have been really nice to me. Lid snort, closing his face to hers in a threatening manner, but his voice was actually calm and caring. Listen well, short stuff. Never trust people just because of a few cheap words or presents. To them, our talent is just a tool. They do not consider us equals. People will always be nice and friendly, until you serve your purpose. But at first mistake, they will drop you like garbage. Stick to those two, but don't let them use you. And now go before someone thinks we are friends. Either you take a ballot too, or stay the heck away from me. Go. Did yell the last words for the others to hear. In his eyes, Quilla was destined to end up like Nana unless she managed to wise up and shed away her childish naivety. Finally alone, Lid sat down and started to wolf down his dinner. You'll see, you bastards, if only a matter of time, before this young snake from Lutia becomes a dragon and swallows you whole.